Thank you very much. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andrea Belloni and I'm a PhD student of Renzo. And today I'm going to present you some results that we have obtained together uh, in the context of Bose-Einstein condensate. Uh, during this uh, conference, we have seen in some talks that the zero helicity condition has a strong role in the study of defects, reconnection, etc. And for this reason, we have decided to study the zero helicity condition applying the Noether theorem and uh, also Kleiner theory. Uh, in particular, the idea um, is to find an extension of a paper uh, by Kidia, uh, where they, the authors, by Kidia and others, where the authors have tried to formalize the result uh, that was obtained in the classical context uh, to prove that the elicity is conserved under the Noether theorem, following the same approach, but uh, um, in the GPE context. So um, I'm going to give you a very small uh, reminder about the physical context that we have already seen, and then I'm going to present you the method. Um, the physical context is the Bose-Einstein condensate. Uh, we know that is a diluted gas of bosons at low density and cooled to temperatures very close to the absolute zero. And it is described by the gross pitayevsky equation that we have already seen that is a nonlinear Schrodinger equation uh, for the um, wave function psi. Indeed, we can see the time evolution on the left part and on the right part, there is the Laplace operator and also the nonlinear contribution. And uh, uh, I'm going to present the formalization of the helicity in the context of vortex defects. Indeed, we have already seen that under the Madelon transformation, we can express the wave function by the uh, density rho and the phase theta to obtain a family of hydrodynamic equations. And for this reason, um, in the last years, some techniques and quantities from the classical context have been uh, formalized in the context of Bose-Einstein condensate. And in particular, we are, I'm going to talk about the helicity in presence of defects. Uh, this because we have already seen that defects could be considered as vortex filaments under the Madelon transformation. And in the classical context, we have seen, for example, uh, by the work, mm, I'm thinking about the work by Moffat and Ricca that connect the helicity to a uh, nodal vortex configuration in the classical context. And for this reason, we can think that the helicity could have a strong role also in this context of vortex filaments. So a vortex defect is a part of the domain with zero density. We have already seen that we can formalize that as the intersection of isophase surfaces. And the phase is, of course, the one connected with the Madelon transformation. So the evolution is given by the GPE. Here there is a figure that maybe Renzo has already illustrated, but uh, we can see the cross-section of a line de defect uh, located uh, uh, on the z-axis, while on the right part there is in blue the defect, uh, an isophase foliation in green uh, that intersects in the um, defect, and uh, the velocity vector field in red that is normal to the isophase surfaces. Uh, so, uh, now I'm going to present the main argument, the main topic, that is the uh, conservation of the elicity and the uh, zero condition. And uh, in particular, I remind you that in this context, in the GPE context, the elicity is uh, conserved, is, uh, and uh, I remind you that it's equal to the integral of the velocity the product between the velocity and the vorticity, while the circulation, gamma, is given by the integral over a loop, closed loop, of the velocity vector field. Um, we already know that uh, vortex, quantum vortex 
has a, a circulation that is quantized, so it's quantizing present of vortex defects. And our goal is to um, demonstrate to prove that the helicity is uh, actually equal to zero. And uh, in this slide, I have summarized uh, the result, the results that have been obtained so far. First of all, we can see a numerical simulation by Zucker and Rika, where the authors have proved this result just uh, uh, computing the linking numbers and the self-linking over an isophase surface. So here the idea is the, uh, um, to use a safer frame. Um, we have a theoretical uh, work paper by Salman where the author have just apply some analytical methods and uh, to, um, topological consideration about cipher surfaces to prove that result. But also in this context, the idea is to compute a limit over the isophase surface. So it's also, it's again connected with a cipher frame. While the last paper by Kidi et al, um, try to um, introduce a, a di different approach that follows the idea uh, that was introduced in the classical context, for example, by Yalom in 1995 and also by Fukumoto uh, to prove that the helicity is conserved by uh, Noether theorem and Noether charge. Um, Start working on this paper, we have found a, uh, a limitation about this approach, their approach, because uh, the result is uh, correct only in absence of defects. But of course, helicity is zero in absence of defects is a trivial result. So we have tried to formalize uh, the same approach, but in presence of defects, uh, up, just applying the Kleiner theory that Matteo and Renzo have already introduced, but I'm going to uh, introduce again later. Before, I'm going to present you the approach by Kiria et al. and why uh, it doesn't work. The idea uh, follow the classical approach that I'm going to tell you in a very informal way, that is uh, to consider just a transformation, a, a tilde, that is equal to the AE plus a perturbation. And just considering uh, a transformation that makes the velocity and the density unchanged, we can say that, uh, of course, the variation of the uh, action is equal to zero. And uh, applying, uh, computing directly the um, variation of the phase imposing that equal to zero, it's possible in the classical context to obtain a quantity that is conserved. And in particular, in oil fluids, this quantity is equal to this part. Um, and uh, we have just, um, Kidi et al have just followed this approach, but uh, they apply this idea to the action of the GP that is just the quantum action um, that was uh, reduced uh, under the application of the Noether of um, sorry of Madron transformation, and in, mm, is depending by the rho, the density, and theta, the phase. So they have done just the same thing, uh, the same they have followed the same approach of the classical context, and they have found this expression of the Noether charge, that is the quantity that is conserved, that I remind you depends on the transformation that you consider that is eta. And, uh, but in the context of GP, they have found that the Noether charge is equal to two contributions and uh, that are equal and opposite. And so the Noether charge is equal to zero. Why they are equal and opposite? Because they have considered the expression of the velocity given by the gradient of the phase. And of course, imposing this uh, expression here and just by transformation, you obtain from this integral, this integral, but positive and negative. So you have that the charge is equal to zero. 
So uh, the idea is to uh, prove that the helicity is equal to zero, just saying that the denoter charge is equal to zero. It's possible to obtain the helicity from the denoter charge, so the helicity is equal to zero. But the problem is that all, uh, also the circulation could be obtained from the denoter charge. So in this way, we have that also the circulation is equal to zero. So this approach is uh, correct only when the circulation is equal to zero, so in absence of defects. Uh, we have tried to formalize this approach in um, applying the Kleiner theory, just uh, uh, considering another expression of the um, GPE action and the velocity. Uh, because we think that the problem is that here, theta in presence of defects is multivalued, so of course, the, this last computation is not so uh, simple as they have made. So uh, here uh, I have summarized Kleiner uh, multivalued gauge theory that you have already seen, for example, in the talk by uh, Matteo and Rick, uh, Renzo. Uh, but the main idea is to consider a cut surface that is a cyber surface and also an isophase surface in the context of GPE. And uh, in this, considering this cut surface, Kleinert have found an expression of the velocity that is this one, where you can see an, a, a part that now is single valued and uh, a part connected with the delta of the um, cipher, of the cut surface that you consider. In particular, it was proved by Kleinert that this expression doesn't depend from the specific cut surface that you consider. And this is the important property that we are going to use. And for this reason, I'm going to express this contribution in this form, theta delta, independent from the cut surface S only because it's more simple. And um, so, well, here we have a figure to understand that, of course, it's a trivial situation. This one, we have a trivial knot, and it's a phase surface that we consider has a cut surface to obtain a simply connected domain. So, um, now uh, I'm going to present our correction of the approach by Kivia et al. That is the following. Uh, we have just compute the um, GP action under the, um, the expression of Kleinert. And it's, it's important to say that Kleinert has, have holes, has also proved that this expression of the velocity is coherent with the hydrodynamical interpretation. And that means that you can obtain hydrodynamic equations also with this, exp with this uh, contribution of a delta. Everything works well, so you can still think about the GP, um, the Bose-Einstein condensate in a hydrodynamical point of view, so everything is coherent. And uh, so I was saying that we have considered this expression of the action that you can see that is similar to the other one, but there is also the contribution of the cut surface that is this theta delta. And we have just followed the approach by Kidia et al, but applying this idea uh, to this expression of the action. So we have applied a transformation, a perturbation eta j. We have computed the variation of the action that, uh, and impo imposing that equal to zero. We obtain again the another charge that again is equal to two contribution that are the same uh, from obtained by Kivia et al. But uh, the main idea is that the expression of the velocity that we are going to consider is not anymore the uh, delta, the sorry, the gradient of the of theta, the phase, but there is also the other contribution connected with the uh, cipher surface, the cut surface. Indeed, you can see here that we have a second contribution that makes the another charge uh, not equal to zero a priori, and that and depends on the um, transformation eta j. So uh, we this is the first result that we have obtained that uh, 
makes the neutral charge different from zero. And uh, uh, to understand if this approach uh, is coherent and could um, consider any situation to obtain the quantization of the circulation in particular, we have computed the um, circulation imposing this transformation that is the one that in the classical context makes the noter charge equal to the uh, circulation. So we have just um, considered this transformation in our expression of the noter charge and we have obtained this integral that in particular uh, counts the number, um, consider the number of intersection between the, a closed loop that you are considering to, of course, imposing this transformation that is C, that is a closed path around the defect. And uh, um, this integral Kleinert shows that is, uh, I've shown that is equal to two pi uh, n that is the quantization of the circulation because I remind you that here we are considering an adimensional context so the quantization of the circulation is adimensional we don't have any physical constants and in particular it's, it's given by 2 pi n. So uh, we have shown that this approach could consider any situation and in particular the presence of uh, defects because the circulation is not equal to zero anymore. Not their charge is not equal to zero a priori, but uh, uh, mm, so in this way, we have also, of course, obtained the conservation of the elicity because the not their charge is conserved. But we want to prove that the elicity is equal to zero, and the idea is to apply some properties of cipher surfaces and uh, Kleiner theory. Here we have considered just the regularity of isophase surfaces, but not in any way the cipher frame. And also for this reason, we think that this could be a good approach because in this way we can just justify the uh, idea of the existence of cipher frame uh, using the um, necessary condition, that the sufficient condition that elicity equal to zero uh, makes through the existence of a cipher frame. And uh, the idea is the following. So we have just applied again un a transformation eta j, that is the one that in the classical context makes the noter charge equal to the elicity. And indeed, we have found here that the GPE, the neutral charge of the GPE, is equal to the integral of omega um, product with the second contribution of the velocity connected with the cut surface. Uh, this is equal to the elicity because now the phase is single valued, so uh, it doesn't play any role in the study of. Um, the elicity and so of course this contribution is the only important contribution in the computation of the elicity. So here I have just uh, considered the expression of the um, contribution connected with a cut surface, uh, a generic cut surface S, to, to make some physical, we can say, consideration about this integral. Uh, indeed, we can interpret this integral as the flux of omega uh, over um, the surface S. And so physically, it could make sense because we have uh, a, it could make sense that this is equal to zero because we have omega, the ver vorticity that um, doesn't have any flux over the cut surface. But, and because we can think about the vorticity over the filament as an infinitesimal um, vector field uh, tangent to the, um, to the vorticity line. And uh, um, there is no flux of this infinitesimal vector field over this surface. But the problem is that physically it could make sense because, of course, I remember that the, um, the consideration about a vortex filament is not the physical 
context, uh, of course, in the physical context, the vorticity is not a delta. So if we, inter if we consider the, interpre the physical interpretation of the delta, we can say, we can just consider this aspect to say that is equal to zero. But we uh, want to obtain a theoretical, mathematical, formal uh, proof of that. Uh, indeed, this integral mathematically, it's ill-defined because, uh, well, it's not ill-defined, but the consideration about the flux, it's not uh, well-defined because uh, the vorticity is actually a delta and uh, it's also over the boundary of the cut surface. So to make this result uh, coherent in a mathematical point of view, we have considered the um, distributional uh, cons um, the distributional interpretation of the helicity, and we have just applied a very um, easy consideration. We can say that is uh, the following: we have that the velocity is independent from the cut surface. So we can compute the helicity over in, in over two different expression of the velocity with different cut surfaces. And with some computation, we can obtain that the entire helicity is actually the um, integral over this uh, um, surface S tilde, that is the union of the two cut surfaces. And uh, thinking about the foliation and the properties of isophase surfaces, we have that, of course, they don't intersect. They have the same boundary and uh, they are uh, regular. And under this um, regularity, we can apply the divergence theorem and the vorticity is a card. So, of course, is equal to zero. So, uh, with a very small consideration, we have proved that is equal to zero in a distributional point of view. Uh, I remind you again that, of course, here it's just the mathematical interpretation of the delta and the Dirac function, but also the interpretation as an infinitesimal uh, flux could make sense in a physical point of view. Again, thanks to the cipher, the isophase regularity and the isophase surface has a, a foliation of the defect. So I'm going to conclude with uh, some consideration. As I have already said, the uh, one uh, the importance of this result is that we um, didn't use uh, the um, concept of a cipher frame. So we can use the, the sufficient, sufficient condition to say that, uh, sorry, that the helicity is equal to zero. So we have a cipher frame. And moreover, we have that we can justify from a more uh, formal theoretical uh, point of view the physical phenomena that we have seen, for example, the one presented by Matteo, or in general, anything that is connected with the helicity equal to zero in GP context. So here there are some references uh, about this topic, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.